Alright, All right, good morning. I'm out here. This is Gardener Israel in the greenhouse. 26th of March. And I am working this sweet potato slip bed. This is the bed in the greenhouse that we are growing our sweet potato slips with. Now these are grocery store sweet potatoes. I don't think there's any problem with that because the ones they sell in the store are those that are commercially grown and they definitely are chosen for uh, the ability to be a good tasting sweet potato or else they won't people won't come back and buy them. I worked in the sweet potato department at the agricultural college that I attended back in the 1970s and I worked in the fields some planting sweet potatoes and they also had a, I wasn't chosen for this part of it but they had a sweet potato testing tasting taste testing department and uh, they basically had boys from the college sign up and every day at lunch I guess they would come to the laboratory there sit down at the table and they would taste certain sweet potatoes they would have have them cooked up you know have numbers on them and they'd have a piece of paper that they would rate the various ones as to what how they tasted overall rating if there was anything unusual about that particular sweet potato like did it taste like something else like did it have a taste of peanut butter and these boys were tasting the sweet potatoes and rating them and then the the guys that ran that department the, the doctors and, and uh, they would then choose which sweet potatoes they would reproduce there at the farm to get what they were desiring to get. So I know that there was quite a bit of work done in trying to make sure that they got sweet potatoes that were desirable to the human taste. Now these here we have uh, stuck halfway in the ground about a month ago and they're coming up and they will come up here's one over here it won't be long before they'll just be filling up this area here and we can then cut slips off and the slips of the sweet potato that is the vine is readily roots in the ground and that's the one that you then plant in the in the fields so it's working quite nicely now I will tell you this there's another method where people will take the sweet potatoes I'll just make an example here and cut it in half and stick it stick some toothpicks in it so it won't go and stick it in a jar of water and then the slips will grow from there however I've seen a couple of videos suggesting where they did it both ways that they don't come up near as fast in the jar of water and we've actually done that uh, here this year and we've got some done in the jar of water method and they are not as far along as these are and we planted them at the same time but uh, here we are and I'm cleaning the bed right now and I have to kneel down on this wood because the greenhouse floor is wet and I don't want my knees getting wet
I hesitate to use my hoe here because I don't want to damage the slip because I can't see. Some of them are just now starting to come up and they will break off easily but I don't see any here. It's a lot more efficient to do this with this hoe. Then to pull up every little individual thing. So I will try to keep you updated on this. Here's another one over here. And yes, one's coming out right there at the end. You maybe can't see it on camera. But I bought these um, at the grocery store. Now I'll tell you this. The price of sweet potatoes was alarmingly high at the grocery store. Now another thing, I have these covers that I sit down over them because here in the greenhouse we are not totally insulated from vermin. And we have We have field mice that get in here. And they will eat the sweet potatoes. This one right here, you see there, that's been eaten by a field mouse. It's taken the top of it off. So I have had made up these uh, covers to keep the field mice from getting at it. And I have to now put them on top of it. I can probably go over here and do that. I'm still trying to keep my knees off of the dirt. That's made out of quarter inch hardware cloth. And the bottom would be treated. These right here are some old racks from an incubator, I believe. An old incubator that we had around here. Somebody gave us that was no good. But we, we recycled that. Alright, that's the sweet potato situation. The sweet potatoes, I'll tell you this. Um... We try really hard to stay on a keto diet around here and stay away from carbohydrates. But, has that thing gotten... Yes, this right here has gotten tall enough to where it's actually pushing down on the... I think that one's higher. Mm -hmm. well, I got another one over here that's a bit higher. This one right here will give it a little bit more head. At some point we're going to have to take these off. But, yeah, it's, bare, it's touching that one, but that's a little higher. But at some point we'll have to take them off. And we have set some traps and caught a few of those field mice. Those are pretty big jokers. But back to the carbohydrates. Everybody in our family doesn't go keto. They, they'll eat sweet potatoes and they want them and all that. And I might eat a few. But in a time of crisis, in a time of food shortage, nobody's going to worry about that. that this, this can save your life. These things here have very little damage, in insect damage in the garden. They readily grow around here. And they also store very well. You can leave them in the ground till Christmas time. 
And then when you do dig them, you can put them in a cool, dry place or in your house, in the basement, root cellar, whatever. And they'll last right on up until almost time to plant them again. This right here, I think, is a gift from God for people trying to survive on the land. Now, if you buy these slips, if you go on some garden catalogs and buy these slips, they will break the bank selling them to you. This is way better here to make your own. Okay, now, let me get over here and talk about what I want to talk about. And I'll try to make sense, a little bit of sense, why I'm out here. Like I said, it's Sunday the 26th. This is my little makeshift studio here. You might say my office. My coffee table right there. Alright, besides being a gardener and an archer, I am a follower of a man known as Jesus Christ. His original Hebrew name was something like Yeshua or Yesu. It means salvation in Hebrew. I am a follower and I try to do what he said. He instructed his followers to declare his name before men. He said that a certain number of people out there in the world belonged to him. They were his sheep. And his, those that believe in him, like myself, were instructed to look for his lost sheep by declaring his name before men. So that's what I do. I get on here and talk about it. I'm, you can see I'm not a regular preacher. Not even a preacher at all, in my opinion. I don't have a bookshelf behind me with a couple of hundred books showing how learned I am. I don't wear a suit and a tie. And uh, I'm just a regular person. I don't ask you for money either. That's another difference. And I'm not saying that everybody that asks you for money is wrong. I'm just saying, you're not going to say that I'm lying to you because I ask you for money because I'm not asking you for money. If you sent me money, I would send it back to you immediately. I don't want anything from you. I look to God to provide for me. And I'm trying to do what He said, declare His name before men. So what I'm going to say today is, there are some people out there that will ultimately come to Him, that belong to Him, that are known as the lost sheep. Your lives have are not fulfilling right now. Fulfilled. You may be in some kind of a very unpleasant situation. You may be really down almost in the ditch or in the ditch. You may be in jail. You may be in rehab. You may be divorced. Your wife may have left you because of the way that you behaved or in some cases the wife leaves you because of the way she behaves. You're not happy. You're searching. What is going to make you happy? Well, that's when we turn to alcohol and drugs and uh, uh, one of the biggies these days is pornography. We think by watching people have sex that it's going to fulfill our lives. It won't. That's not where it's at. Yeshua is ready to... He wants you. He's sending me out to look for you. He wants you to come. He's ready, willing and able to save you. To bring you back to the flock that you belong to. 
He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Maybe it was the truth, the way, and the life. But those three things. He's the way. Way is a road. The Appian Way. The highway. It's a road. I am the way. You need to get on the road with Him. Alright. In this world, we've got... The road means what path are you taking. Alright. Now, you are on a crossroads right now. There's... People saying, follow me this way, follow me into the new world order, uh, religion, all of this. Now that road right there, you're going to notice that it's well traveled. It's pretty wide. If it's a dirt path, you can see people have been walking down it big time. Now this other road over here, it's going to be very narrow. But big enough for about one or two people to walk down. Going to be slightly grown up with weeds. It's not going to be the well, the more well-traveled path. Well, that's the way you want to go. The world is going this way. You want to go this way. These people are heading off into a oblivion. I don't know what it is. It's not good, I tell you that right now. Oblivion, they're going the wrong way. They're not going towards the light. They're not going towards the life. Okay? We're all going to die. We know that in our bodies. But this man, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, He said He could handle that for us. If you go down this path right here towards Him, he can fix it when you die and bring you to eternal life. This other way only says I can give you temporary pleasure much as you want, much as you can afford. I can give you that. But beyond that, they don't offer honestly nothing except some vague notions that they're going to figure out how to give you eternal life through science, somewhere down the road. I can tell you they're not very close to it. Go look at the funeral home and see. They're not close to it. They're never going to get there in my opinion. This is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, now I've told you which way to go. That is if you belong to Him. If you don't belong to Him, you are not hearing what I'm saying. I know that. My sheep, He said, hear my voice. That means you that hear it, that are watching. The rest of the sheep have already turned me off. They're jumping down that road right there. They're happy with it right now. But that's the road to oblivion. I'm not going to try to get into what happens down that road. I don't know. But it's not the good road. Alright? This is the good road. Now how do you do it? Let me tell you how to do it. Now, I've told you what you need to do. Now, I've got to give you a little help on how to do it. You have to learn of Jesus. He said, learn of me. Take my yoke. My yoke is easy. And learn of me. Well, you're learning a little bit right now from me. But you need to do it yourself. So this is how you do it. You go to your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, there's one around you somewhere. There's people out there that give them away free online. Been more Bibles printed than any other book in the history of the world. There's plenty of them out there. Now go to the, the, the Bible is divided up into two parts. It's called the Old Testament. And you open it up. And then the New Testament. Now the testament means, you know, like a last will and testament. This is Jesus' will to you, the New Testament. It's for you. Learn of me. It's not a very long book. Get in there and read the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now they're all different, but they contain many of the same things. And learn of him. 
Now, I'll tell you this too. When you learn of Jesus, you're going to be shunned by your friends and your family if they don't believe. They're going to shun you. They don't believe in it. They're going to call you names. They're going to say you've got, lost it. Come back over here onto this road. Just read it and learn. Okay? You're not saved yet because you're, you're just learning. But you got to learn before you commit to Jesus. You're not just going to commit to something you don't know anything about. If you go shopping for a particular product, you know, like you're going to buy a computer or something, you're going to get on the internet and you're going to look at different models and what they offer. This is what Jesus means by learn about Him. Now, there's another thing they're going to tell you. Prove it. How do you know Jesus even ever existed? How do you know somebody didn't make that story up? Well, you don't. It's possible somebody made it up. Pretty big hoax. Now, once you read it, you'll realize that would have been hard to do. But still, it's possible. How do you know Jesus existed? You don't. You're never going to know that until you meet Him in the Kingdom of Heaven. It could have been all made up. I don't think it was. I think once you start reading about it, you will say, Hey, I don't think anybody made all this up. There's a lot of detail here. I'm going to tell you when it happened to me about learning that it was real. I was reading the Bible in my early 30s and I was reading of the crucifixion and the trial of Yeshua. And I was reading about what was said at the trial and all that and all of a sudden it hit me like a brick. I remember it to this very day. That would have been 40 years ago. I said to myself, hey, this is a real story. This is no fairy tale. I'm reading about a real trial of a real man. Now that's the way it happened to me. But I wasn't yet a believer. All I, My first step was to say, hey, I believe this. Hey, this is a real story. Then I started listening to different preachers on the... Back then it was on the radio. And I was intrigued by it, you know, telling about who Jesus was and all that kind of stuff. Jesus, they say He's the Son of God. He is God. All kind of stuff. Some really great preachers that are all now deceased. And I really appreciate them. They really were out there doing the work of, of looking for the lost sheep. But nowadays, everybody's got a chance to get a... Um, a camera and get on YouTube and, and put it out there and that's what I'm doing. Now you're going to be bombarded with people saying, well, how could Jesus be God if, he, if man can't be God? And oh, any hundreds of different reasons that you shouldn't believe in it. Well, let me tell you this. There's a lot of things we don't believe in that we can't explain. Plenty of things that we believe in that we can't explain. Think about it. I can't explain how that sweet potato miraculously starts growing sweet potato leaves out of the ground. I can't explain that. I just know it does. And I believe it. I believe it. I can see it. It's real. It's, to me, it's real. Don't let anybody trick you in trying to prove the Bible. They want to get you tangled up and get you all bound up in all kind of uh, arguments and all. That's not what it is. You look at what Jesus said. Alright, now about the, the Old Testament. Jesus said that the Old Testament spoke of Him. It told of Him. Now, if you get into it, you're going to eventually go to the Old Testament and start seeing how the Old Testament prophesied the coming of the Messiah. But for right now, get the New Testament and read the eyewitnesses. These guys were with Him. If it's true, which I think it is. Read about it. I hear a puppy out there. All right? That's your starting point.
Now, if you've gone down that road, that other road, I go to the left. That's left. This is right. Okay? You go down that road, and you've been, you're down there pretty good ways. What's going on? Let me get that puppy. Just keep it up. Show you this puppy. Come here, puppy. Come here, puppy. Come here, my puppy. Come here, little puppy. That's a good little puppy. Look at that little puppy. Look at that little puppy. Yeah, look at that little puppy. This is one of the puppies of our livestock guardian dogs. And they'll holler like that when they don't see their mama and they he's look he's looking for food right now. Here comes another one. Alright, little boy, I'm gonna let you down. Alright, you go find your mama and quit hollering and messing my video up. I don't have any milk. Okay. I don't know how that happened either, by the way. Life. But I believe it. I believe it happened. There it is right there. That's a part Kangol and part uh, Pyrenees right there. These are part Kangol and part Pyrenees. Okay, back to what I was saying. Let's go back in here. Let me finish this up real quick. I got a lot of work over there so I can sit down again. I don't know when I'm going to stop talking. And I don't know when you guys are going to stop listening. Not costing me anything much to sit here and run my mouth. Alright, God uses... You'll find it in the Bible. He uses people that are not what the system or the world thinks should be. I'm supposed to be sitting here in a suit and a tie supposed to have a bank of books behind me, a nice uh, earth globe over here, a few nice little pieces of statuettes over here, clean shaven, all that kind of stuff. That's what the world says is the people you should be listening to. But I'm just a regular person. God did prepare me for this though. Ever since I was a child, he made me interested in history. I couldn't get enough of it. I read the encyclopedias. I had no idea why I was doing it. But all of this helped me eventually understand what had gone on in the past. Okay, go to your Bible. If you're one of the lost sheep, you will eventually come to him. He said, I will not lose any that the Father has put into my hands. Okay? You're going to get run into this business about how can a man be God? How can Jesus say, I and the Father are one? How can he say, before Abraham was, I am? He was saying he was an eternal being, but at other times it seemed like he was saying that he was just, he couldn't do anything without God. All of these things right here are going to trip you up. Don't let it. Read the Bible. Read the New Testament. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We aren't supposed to know, I've come to this conclusion, we aren't supposed to know exactly how it works. It's a matter of belief. It's who believes in Him. And I believe it. I can't tell you every exact thing about Him, but I'm telling you, when I listen to His words, I believe it. Look at his miracles. See if you believe that. He said, if you're having trouble believing in me, look at the works that I did. That is, the miracles that he did. Concentrate on the miracles that he did. First, you're going to ask yourself, is this a reliable book? Did he really raise a man from the dead? Did he really heal a man that was born blind? He wants you to look at that. 
The other parts will come later. All right. That's, I guess I've said as much as I can say. I think I'm... Uh, give, if, if anybody's still listening to me right now, I will be amazed because I have really gone on. But I think that you're going to conclude that I am sincere and that I do believe this. And I do believe it. I'm through trying to prove it. You can't prove it. I believe it. Alright, this is Gardner Israel signing off.